Let's look at a little bit of what you will be enjoying in this recap movie. Let's begin. The opening scene sets an intriguing backdrop with the mysterious findings in the Mongolian border mountains, setting the stage for a compelling exploration. Professor Yang Chiaolin's quest to uncover more about these discoveries in 1979 adds an air of urgency and mystery to the narrative. The introduction of characters like Hu Bei and Yang Peng, along with their respective roles in the excavation team, adds depth and human connection to the story. Hu Bei's secret affection for Yang Ping adds an emotional layer to the unfolding tale, hinting at potential conflicts and character development as the story progresses. Before I forget kindly like and subscribe. After days of laborious work, the team uncovers a giant skull, leaving everyone astounded. Moments later, the cave starts shaking, and eventually this leads to a huge explosion, obliterating the entire camp. Sensing danger, the armed soldiers, under Commander Han Zhu Yang, position themselves outside the cave, ready for confrontation. However, the only ones to come out are Professor Yan and some surviving workers. The explosion appears to have opened a passage inside the cave. Sohan asks if anyone wants to investigate it with the professor. Since there's a huge risk of life, most of the soldiers hesitate to participate. However, a brave Ping immediately volunteers to help her father in this mission. This prompts Hu Baiyi to follow suit, and his best friend Kan San also decides to tag along. In the end, a group of soldiers is eventually formed to go for this mission. Following this, the team sits up for their mission, making their way through the demolished cave. Soon, they come across a vast chasm, which they proceed to climb down into. They eventually make it to an icy platform, with a passage leading to a dark underground. Upon climbing down even further, they find an unexplored cave, filled to the brim with peculiar fossils. Is that Joe Biden? After wandering around for a while, well, they discover an exit that leads them to the other side of the mountain. Professor Yang tells Hu Bai Yi that according to the legends, there's the gate of an ancient kingdom in this vicinity, belonging to a penitent secret government. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when the other soldiers find a shocking discovery, a colossal paw print in the snow. Following this, the team starts pursuing these paw prints, unaware of the fact that a giant beast is nearby. On the way, they find numerous butterfly-like creatures fluttering around them. Upon a closer look, they realize these aren't butterflies, but peculiar-looking bats. Unbeknownst of the threat they pose, one soldier captures one with his bare hands, triggering an unexpected outcome. He burns down with a blue flame, resulting in his demise. Two more soldiers rush to his aid, only to suffer the same fate. Seconds later, hundreds of these bats surround the team, prompting them to open fire. The noise of the commotion startles the giant beast nearby, causing it to retreat. However, its sudden movement triggers an avalanche posing another challenge for the group. In a desperate bid for survival, the soldiers begin running away, yet several of them are killed. At one point, they're forced to stop because there's an abyss in front of them. Left with no other choice, the soldiers pair up with ropes before jumping into it. As they fall, a rope tying Hu Yi and Ping gets stuck on a piece of ice, leaving the two hanging. Not long after, the rope snaps, causing them to plunge into the darkness below. In the next scene, Hu Bai Yi regains consciousness and finds himself in Ping's arms. He is unable to understand how he managed to survive such a fall. This incident reduces the number of survivors to four. Hu Bai Yi, Ping, Professor Yang, and Kong Sun. The rest didn't have names, so we didn't care about them anyway. These survivors then gather as many supplies as possible before resuming their excavation. Eventually, they come across an expansive cave with a tall tower at its center. The professor recognizes this place as the sacred palace of Kunlun. The tower is said to have nine levels, where demon creatures have been trapped. Professor Yang then kneels down and lights up a candle. The fire instantly creates a flame that summons a swarm of bats, encircling the tower. After this, he sends Hu Bai Yi and Ping to the tower's entrance. As soon as the duo step in, holding hands, an opening appears on the top, emitting a bright light. Soon after, the cave begins to fill with numerous spirits. Assuming that they have opened the gates of the devil, Khan Sun immediately extinguishes the candle, thwarting the entire process. Unfortunately, as a consequence, the cave begins to collapse, and the bats return to attack them. Sensing the impending danger, 
Kang Sun sacrifices himself to divert the bat's attention, enabling the remaining group members to flee. The three of them somehow manage to find an exit, but it's on the high edge behind a waterfall. While contemplating their next move, the bats catch up to them and launch their attack. Hu Ba Yi attempts to fend them off with fire, but a bat strikes him from behind. Upon witnessing the emerging flame, Ping hastily pushes him into the water before jumping off with her father. Hu Ba Yi manages to find her underwater, but they're soon separated by a giant water creature that takes her away. In the aftermath, a heartbroken Hu Ba Yi swims out and makes his way back to the base. Once there, he gets his wounds treated, while Han informs him that he's the only survivor. The commander further mentions that they found all the dead bodies of their soldiers, except for Ping's and her father's. Devastated by the loss of his loved ones, Hu Ba Yi decides to quit everything and boards a train to return home without notifying anyone. At the station, he is received by his new employer, Mr. Wang, who assigns him a job as a librarian. From that point forward, he starts working there and lives a peaceful life. One day, during a lunch outing at a local bar, Hu Ba Yi unexpectedly reunites with his childhood friend, Kai Xuan, who works as an entertainer. The following day at work, he stumbles upon a book authored by Professor Yang. Upon going through it, he discovers several contents of the same demon tower, which makes him realize the professor was aware of it since the very beginning. As he connects the missing dots, he understands that only he and Ping could activate the demon tower, explaining why Professor Yang sent them in earlier. Meanwhile, Commander Han and his team discover a coffin containing a living woman resembling Ping. They refer to her as Shirley. This woman possesses an uncontrollable, mysterious power, so the officers are forced to confine her in a closely monitored room. Three years later, Han's team finds Professor Yang and brings him to their headquarters simultaneously. In West China, Wu City comes under attack by the enigmatic giant beasts, causing widespread destruction. When Professor Yang learns of this, he theorizes that the tower's activation has opened gateways in space and time, allowing demonic creatures to infiltrate Earth. In order to seek deeper insights, the professor sneaks out of the military headquarters. The emergence of these demons appears to have its effect on Hu Bai Yi as well, as the scar on his back becomes troublesome. One day, while reading in the library, his back suddenly ignites with blue flames, and he begins exhibiting inexplicable powers. He can now make furniture, as well as his friend, float in the air. Shortly after, Mr. Wan shows up, and despite witnessing the ongoing commotion, he looks very calm. He quickly gains control over the situation, bringing things back to normalcy. Upon inquiring what's going on, Mr. Wand explains that Hu Bai Yi's blood is contaminated by demonic force due to the earlier bat attack. According to him, Hu Bai Yi now exhibits immense power, but its use can lead him to hell. Hu Bai Yi wonders how he knows all of this and the latter uses his own psychic powers to transform the library into an old tomb. He finally reveals himself to be a protector of Prince Yi from the Sulin nation. He goes on to explain that Prince Yi was Hu Bai Yi's predecessor, and he had been the one to lead mankind against the demon race that had taken over Earth. Prince Yi used his own body to seal the tower, trapping most demons inside, but some of them assumed human form. These demons are now looking for Hu Bai Yi, because he's the only one capable of opening the tower. Back at the military headquarters, Shirley appears to have recovered her memories and surprisingly expresses her desire to meet Hu Bai Yi. As a result, Han traces him and pays him a visit at the library. The latter initially refuses to join the military force again, but he changes his mind after learning about the woman resembling Ping. Following this, Hu Bai Yi accompanies the commander and Kai Xuan pegs along and leads them to northern China, where he introduces them to the team that will be going on a mission to find the professor. The group comprises a guy named Cheng Dong, a young woman Wei Wei, Shirley, and other soldiers. Overwhelmed with emotion upon seeing Shirley, Hu Bai Yi addresses her as Ping, but she insists on calling herself Shirley. The group then prepares weapons and supplies before setting off on their mission. They make their way through the desert, riding on camels. At one point of their journey, they're hit by a sandstorm prompting them to run for their lives. As a result, Kai Xuan and three other members get separated from the group. After days of non-stop travel, Hu Bai Yi's group arrives at the ruins of Oil City, while Kai Xuan's group is still in the middle of the desert, when they are suddenly ambushed by demonic creatures. Kai Xuan's group further splits up in a desperate attempt to save themselves. The monsters kill two of them, while Kai Xuan and another man manage to reach Oil City, 
reuniting with the main group. Upon hearing their confrontation with the monsters, Hu Ba Yi suggests leaving to avoid the massacre like it happened earlier in the cave. However, Cheng and Shirley decide to stay and complete their mission. Their discussion is abruptly interrupted by the approaching sounds of monsters. As a result, they arm themselves and prepare to fight. They soon gun down the first beast before chasing the second one. However, when they turn back, the first one is already gone. In the midst of their struggle, Shirley runs towards an abandoned school, and Hu Bai Yi follows her. Upon entering, he discovers a bunch of dead bodies hanging from the ceiling. He then comes across a tunnel, leading him to the prince's tomb. Soon after, he is attacked by a creature which knocks him unconscious. The creature charges to finish him off, but Shirley intervenes, making it go away. In an unexpected turn of events, she uses her powers to put Hu Bai Yi's body inside the coffin. Meanwhile, more demonic monsters show up at the scene, so the group takes cover in the upper floors of the building and fights back, using silver bullets and rocket launchers. Where they get those, it becomes evident that the demons possess formidable strength, rendering bullets ineffective against them. On the other hand, Wei Wei poses as one of the mannequins and tries her best to remain motionless in order to avoid being caught. As soon as the creature moves away, she makes a dash towards Kashuan and the two hide inside a bus. Nevertheless, the creature locates them and begins attacking the vehicle. After some time, Habaya regains consciousness and starts screaming for help. While he's at it, his arm wound heals at a rapid pace, leaving him bewildered. He is then teleported into the same cave containing the demonic tower. There, he witnesses a creature dropping Ping's body into a flame that eventually gets possessed by the demon queen. After the creature departs, Habaya approaches her demanding Ping's return. However, the queen refuses to give up on Ping's body because she holds the power to open the tower. She instead proposes that he accompany her to the tower and unlock the long waiting door. Our hero thinks for a while, but politely turns her down and he insists on being sent back to Oil Town, asserting that he'll find some other way. The demon queen finds this amusing, but decides to grant him a chance, teleporting him back. By this time, Shirley gains control over all the monstrous creatures and directs them to take down the group members. The moment he returns, Habeyu notices the creature attacking the bus with Koshuan and Viwei, so he quickly takes it down with a rocket launcher. Seeing this, the other creatures charge towards him, but Shirley saves him, knowing that he is the key to opening the tower door. She then holds him in her arms and assures his safety. However, Habeya, who realizes that Ping will never be back, retrieves a pistol and shoots her three times. This causes all the creatures to disappear and the demonic tower to crumble. In her final breaths, she admits that he is the only one who can kill her. She then unexpectedly kisses him before collapsing to the ground. Moments later, Shirley is transformed into Ping, who expresses her happiness to see him one last time. However, Habeya is still not ready to lose her. He carries her and brings her to the prince's coffin, hoping that it might heal her. He lays down beside her and gently touches her forehead with his own, triggering a surge of memories from her childhood. Turns out Ping possessed an inherent supernatural ability, the power to revive deceased beings. This explains how Habeya survived, despite falling into the deep and dark abyss earlier. However, Ping's mother forbade her from using these powers for some reason. One day, her mother passed away after burning in a blue fire revealing that she was a descendant from demons who took human form. Before the vision ends, Ping expresses her unconditional love for Habeya and requests him to find her father. With this, she passes away, leaving Habeya heartbroken. After a while of remorse, he regains his composure and decides to honor her final wish. The movie ends with Habeya resuming the mission with the rest of the team members. Lessons to be learned. Your enemy will never hurt you when you have something precious they need to survive. They will protect you at all costs. That is how Hu Baiyi managed to survive. The demons needs him to free them because he is the key to opening the tower for their freedom, so they couldn't kill him. Let me know about what you have learned in the comment section. Don't forget to follow Biscay Movies on all social media platforms for more of this. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.